your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, David, aren't you going to have a second cup of coffee? What for? To go with your second piece of toast. I suppose if I had nine cups of coffee, I'd have nine pieces of toast or vice versa. How'd you know I want a second piece of toast? Psychic, because I love you. Well, that's nice. That I'm psychic, you mean? Oh, but you love me. Oh, David, isn't it a lovely morning? Oh, it's lovely. What? Very lovely. It's, it's raining a... cats and dogs. Raining, who cares? It's lovely inside. I hope Mama's headache's better. Of course it is. Wasn't it a beautiful moon last night? Ooh, not bad. I love you even more when you try to be offhandish. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, handy. Yeah. oh, I feel so good this morning. I don't even mind the rain. Well, rain or no rain. Off to work. That is the only blot on the scutcheon. Scutcheon? You don't even know what a blot on a scutcheon is. Of course I do. It's a fly in the ointment. Oh. You're catching that train every morning is the fly on our scutcheon. I thought you were going to say I was catching flies every morning. <laughs> That wouldn't make any sense to anybody, including me. Well, then you're not as bright as I am. No, I I guess I'm not. Say, isn't this house cozy in the rain? Mm -hmm. Cozy when it isn't raining. Mm. That's because it's well insulated. Beautifully designed, too. We had a wonderful architect. We did? Mm. Mm -hmm. Paid him enough. (laughs) I couldn't find one I'd like better. Neither could I. In all the entire world, I couldn't. I think we sound crazy to listen to it. We seem to like everything about us and like everything we have. Why not? We'd be crazy if we didn't. Uh Uh-oh. There's Fritz. Time to go. Is he driving downtown with you? No, he just had the car out this morning. Oh, I I forgot to tell you. Hmm? I'm leaving it at the station garage for greasing. And the boy will bring it back. Good. I won't need it this morning anyway. And if I do need a car, which I won't, I can use Fritz's truck. Uh, you feel very swell driving around in a truck, don't you? It gives me glamour. Mm-hmm. What did I do with my keys? Have you got the keys? No, they're in the car. Oh, oh, Fritz was driving it. I forgot that. Oh. Now, don't you come out of the car. You'll get all wet. I don't care. Good morning, Mr. Norton. Oh, good morning, Fritz. She's all filled up with gasoline. I had her downtown already. Mm, are you certainly up and about at the crack of dawn, Fritz? Well, I knew it would rain. Good morning, Fritz. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Hey, David, drive carefully. Now, since when are you telling me? Since always. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not a woman driver. That is just an accident of birth. Ooh. Just because you're a man doesn't mean you have to stick your neck out to get it chopped off. So (laughs) drive slowly. It's raining, it's pouring. I told you to skadoodle into the house, you'll... You'll catch your death of cold. Now, get off. Skadoodle. Skadoodle. If you kiss me a decent goodbye. Yeah. Very decent. Mm. Mornings are so nice until you leave. That's the way they should be. Well, let's see. Have I got everything? Oh, I've got to take this back to the store. Clean handkerchief? Mm Mm-hmm. Clean handkerchief. Clean nose. (laughs) See you on the 540. Clean ears. It's a date. Mrs. Norton. Oh, I don't mean to interrupt you. You're not interrupting anything. Good morning, Bertha. Uh, your mother, I uh, bring her a tray up to bed. Oh, uh, Mama hates trays. I'll go up and see if she's feeling better. She said it was just a little headache. she take a tray, hate them or not hate them. Goodbye, David. You wait a minute. I can't get the car started. There it is. Goodbye. Now get back in the house, you dope. He certainly looks handsome in a car, doesn't he, Bertha? He looks handsome without a car. As a matter of fact, he even makes the car look handsome. I suppose it's his profile. (laughs) Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye! You never change, I hope. Such a wonderful world. (laughs) For them who see it, it is. Even in the rain. Well, that's because our house is so well insulated. That is because your hearts are not so well insulated. <laughs> I prepare the tray now for Mrs. Brown. Oh, um, I think you better wait, Bertha. She'll think we're trying to keep her in bed. And... <laughs> I'll, I'll go out and see her. Well, uh, 
I make out the marketing list, Mrs. Norton. Uh, you are going downtown? Yeah, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mr. Norton's having the car fixed this morning, so we have plenty of time. I'll be down in a minute, Bertha. Oh, and you might make a little extra coffee. I'll have another cup with Mom. All right. Fritz. Yeah? What are you doing? Are you in the ice box again? Yeah, just for a glass of milk, Mama. Oh, my. You'll get fat. Uh, no, a man does not get fat on a farm. <laughs> he just gets healthy and strong, and he stays young forever. <laughs> you are kidding yourself. <laughs> you are pretending, Bertha, but you feel like I do. Yeah, yeah, Papa. I feel like you do. Not wood. <laughs> well, I'm not superstitious. But I pray it will not change. Just like a woman. They do not want change. Fritz, what are you going to do now? Well, it's raining too heavy for me to work outside. I think I go up to the bar. Mr. Norton does not know, but I am preparing it. Painting and rebuilding. Uh, for Christmas, we, uh, we buy them something to go with the barn. Yeah. Huh? Christmas. Like in our own home, Mama. Yeah, yeah. But we talk too much. <laughs> Christmas is... Not for months. Yeah, now I must prepare a tray for Mrs. Brown. Now. Bertha, the telephone. Ah, oh, the telephone. Uh, Mrs. Norton, she will answer it. Huh? She's upstairs in her mother's room. It doesn't ring up there. I better go. No, I, I go. My English is better than yours. Oh, that is what you think. I understand better. Well, talking is more important. Well, I will not argue. Good. I answer. Mrs. Norton's residence. Oh, Mrs. Norton. Uh, like a say, uh, is Mrs. Norton there? Uh, who is calling her, please? Uh, say, there's been a wreck, an accident about a mile and a half down the road. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Norton's car and George Mason. Oh, terrible smash up. Both cars wrecked. Yeah, yeah. Fritz, what is it, you... You look so funny. Hey, say, will you, you, will you tell Mrs. Norton? I think she ought to get down here fast. About a mile and a half down the river road. Yeah, you and, come. And, and I'd say, you better warn her it's pretty bad. Fritz, an accident? Yeah. It's bad, I know. Yeah. Bertha, is that the telephone ringing? Oh, I tell her. No, I go see about it first alone. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that is better. Uh, th then you will tell her. Yeah, I, I go now. Yeah. Hey, I thought I heard the telephone ringing. What's the matter, you two? You're looking so solemn. Who calls? Mrs. Norton, I... Fritz, what is it? It's better you tell her, Fritz. There's been an accident. David in the car. Yeah. I I'm going in the truck. Tell me, Fritz. No, uh, that is all we know. Now, you, you stay here, Mrs. Norton. Uh, Fritz will, will telephone uh, after. Come in the kitchen with me until we come. I'll, I'll go with you, Fritz. Oh, no, no, no. Better you stay here. No, I'm all right. Mrs. Norton, are you sure? It's almost as if I knew last night. This morning was too perfect. Here, take my jacket, and the truck is out near the kitchen door. Well, I, I come, too. I'll telephone you, Bertha. And, Bertha, don't tell Mama. Don't tell Mama. Oh, it'll be all right, I know. It'll be all right, because it must be. Everything was too perfect, I guess. I'm ready, Fritz. Fritz, Fritz, now don't forget to telephone. Uh, roll up the window, Mrs. Norton, or it will rain in. All right. <laughs> How far is it, Fritz? Well, it's uh, just uh, a little way down the road. It's the rain. It makes everything so slippery. I had a feeling, Fritz. Yeah, it is the rain. I never minded the rain. Fritz, do you, do you believe in premonitions? Most intelligent people do. I tried not to believe last night, but there was a moment when it was just like saying goodbye. If it weren't for that moment, I couldn't stand. I, I know. Please don't even think like that. You're right. I, I mustn't. Drive faster, Fritz. Please drive faster. I 
see people just just a little ways down the road. There's a crowd. Uh, yeah, that is it. Don't look, Mrs. Norton. There's a car upside down in the middle of the road. And there's a house smashed against the stone wall. It's a, I... You are all right. No. Yes, you are. <laughs> mustn't let go. David wouldn't want me to. I think he would want you to cry a little. No, no. It is a great and terrible thing that has happened to us, Mrs. Norton. A, a great and terrible thing. Hey, what's that there? There's trash all over the road. Man, be quiet. Don't let me break down, Fritz. David wouldn't like it, really. He's, he's always so good in emergencies. Fitz, I don't understand. David always drove so carefully. We will see. Ask that man. Uh, what was happened? Uh, you're Mr. Norton's farmer. I just called, ain't you? Uh, yeah. Fitz, ask him, please. Ask him. Uh, well, you is... better step on the gas down at the doctor's then house. Then maybe... Both Roy... of them brung down there, and it was all Mason's fault. They smelled liquor on him when they picked him up. Then it wasn't David's fault. Where we go now. Help me, help now, me. Now, now, control. No, don't stop the car. Drive quickly. Just get there, Fritz. David, don't let me think. David, please keep me from thinking. We'll be there in five minutes. I'm all right, Fritz. Of course I'm all right. I, I have to be. David knew I'd be. He knew it last night. Of course I'm all right. Of course I'm all right. Let Fritz, yourself right. alone, Mrs. Norton. Let it come. I, I don't feel like crying. I just... I just don't feel. Maybe because I've already said goodbye. That's all right. Don't let yourself think. Everything changes in just one minute, doesn't it? Well, that is life. Now you sound like David. Well, he understands. Yes, he understands. Now I understand. Everything can change in just one minute. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Except pray. Please drive faster, Fritz. I happened to be having dinner the other night at a home where there was a teenage youngster. I drove home with the man of the house, and he stopped to buy a case of Coke. As soon as we carried that case into the kitchen, his daughter dashed to the phone, called up some friends, and before we sat down to dinner, she'd cooked up a party. Give young people ice-cold Coca-Cola, and their social life is off to a good start. <laughs> Mr. King... You haven't heard from Mrs. Norton of Fritz, have you? No, not yet. Oh, the waiting is terrible. I, I hope, I hope when we do hear... No, you don't have to say it. We're all and Mrs. Hoping. Norton is so young to learn such a big lesson. Now, Bertha, maybe Today she won't have Today she has to. learned enough already. Uh, well, i see you tomorrow, Mr. King. Uh, and with good news, I trust. Yeah. Goodbye, Bertha. Well, why don't you come in and say hello to Mrs. Brown? Uh? I think I will, but uh, first I just want to say that every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>